Hi everyone. So we're gonna start in a few minutes. I'm just setting up the mic. Uh, but we should be, we should get started in really a few minutes. hard to get it right and I hope you can hear me well let me switch to twitch I think I can I think I can monitor the channel on my phone. Why is that right there? Okay. Yes, perfect. Okay, so I should be able to um, to see your comments, if any, right there. Maybe, maybe that. Okay, I think I see you here, so don't hesitate dropping a comment. Um, we're gonna start in two minutes now. Okay, great. Hi everyone. I hope you ha you are having a a good week. And I hope you can hear me well. So today we're gonna see something which is super important uh, in terms of um, you know um, communicating your work. Uh, this is about uh, uh, exporting the networks you work on to the web. Hey, so I don't know if it's Jean or Jean. But hi, uh, you know, I'm a new uh, streamer on Twitch, so I'm not exactly the used to uh, interacting with the people uh, talking in the chat, but it's a real pleasure. Hey, Flef. So, um, Flef, I don't know if you know me, but I know you uh, because of what you post on, on Twitter. Um, so for Jean, who is with us, um, Flef is the, um, a cartographer. Um, I don't know if you are freelance, uh, Flef, um, but uh, Flef is somebody who's uh, uh, posting a lot of um, analysis, a lot of analysis of social media, and I would say 
Twitter in particular. Cool. OK, so you're freelance. And, um, and, and the work he posts uh, is uh, well done um, uh, and informative. So uh, it's a super, if you are after examples of what you can do with Giphy, um, and not just Giphy, but uh, basically uh, harvesting social media data and, and conducting analysis on, on it, um, check out the work by Flef. And let me check. Flef, maybe you can post the, your Twitter uh, handle. Maybe that's exactly like Flef Graph. I don't know. Yes, Flef Graph, indeed. So I'm going to just wait a couple of more minutes. And, and then we'll start. Well, you're welcome, Flef. And as you maybe you don't know, but this with these videos are going to be uh, I post them in, in replay uh, on YouTube. So uh, with the comments on the left of the screen, so uh, you know the, the conversation we have is for history. So the <laughs> I'm glad uh, uh, we could just explain in a few uh, in a few words what you are what you're doing. Yeah, what can I say before we start? I'm super happy today because I uh, submitted a, a paper uh, to a, a, an academic journal. So as you know, maybe, but uh, uh, when you, uh, I mean, my work is to be a, a professor and a researcher in, and in this world, uh, there is a famous dictum, uh, publish or perish. So, Publication is super important to uh, well, just to uh, uh, for the advancement of your career. So uh, when you submit a paper, it's always a bit of a celebration, even if nothing nothing um, it guarantees that it's going to be uh, accepted for publication. But at least I'm super relieved that I could just uh, get get it out. Um, and the topic is on. Uh, it's not network analysis, it's sentiment analysis, which is, uh, I'm fond of text analysis and, and basically, uh, yeah, it was a contribution in this field. Okay, well, we are a few minutes after three, so I, I suggest we start. Um, welcome everyone, the four of you. <laughs> um, uh, thanks a lot for being here. Uh, the topic of today is um, how to publish a network that you worked on uh, directly from Giphy. Um, so we're going to discuss later about the, the background of all of this, but I would suggest that we start right away with, uh, with the practice. Salut Martin, super glad to see you here. Uh, so if you don't know uh, Martin Grandjean. Martin is a big name in digital in the digital humanities. Um, he's a historian and uh, um, and a, a key actor in the at least in the uh, European scene for digital humanities. Um, and uh, he uh, Ma uh, Martin, excuse me if I uh, my apologies if I'm wrong, but I think you you uh, wrote a doctoral thesis on the history of. Uh, Société des Nations, but I might be wrong. And uh, you looked at uh, networks of actors in relation to uh, the SDN, but I might be wrong. If so, please correct me. But in any case, we're going to start and, um, and look at the ways you can uh, publish networks on the web. Uh, let's switch directly to, uh, to Giphy. And I do that here. Fantastic. Um, oh, and I have a timer, so let's let's launch the timer. <laughs> yeah, 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 Martin. Uh, well, you know, you the web is uh, 
you don't control the web and it's uh, you have people talking about you and and I hope I was not too too wrong so um, how do you publish a network to the web from Gephi so I, I would suggest we start by opening a network uh, on Gephi so what I'm gonna the network I'm gonna use is uh, Les Miserables, uh, which is uh, you know a very classic network that uh, that you can open um, at the when you launch Gephi, the welcome screen um, offers you to open Les Miserables. So the one I just opened is is a slight different version from the default one that G Giphy has um, but let me apply a layout and you will maybe recognize it now so okay that's a network I just um, sp specialized it then I uh, just to add colors on it uh, I'm gonna um, detect communities which is there so you, all of that you don't have really to care about because it's just to have a network to work on. Uh, so we're gonna yeah just colorize. Oops, that's here. Colorize, colorize network according to according to the communities in it. Okay, so you are in Gephi and this is the network you have. How do you go from that to a network on the web? So. Um, uh, there is a plugin that has been released um, um, uh, 10 days ago, uh, which you should install. So uh, you, you do the installation just once, uh, but let me show you how to do that. Uh, yes. You click on Tools, Plugins, and a window opens. Uh, let me stop the zoom. Yes. In this uh, window, you, s you have different tabs. So the tabs I'm highlighting now. Uh, you should go on the, I just realized I should have changed the pointer of the mouse to be yellow. Uh, I forgot to do that. Uh, never mind. Uh, once you're there, you click on Available Plugin, the tab. And it, this shows you a list of every plugin you can install in Gephi. And I really um, encourage you to have a look at them. Uh, it's easier to navigate this list if you um, click on Name, you know, the header, so that the list is ordered alphabetically. And then you scroll down to publish your network to the web. So you select it, uh, you, you select the, the tick box, and you click on install. OK, next, it asks you to accept the terms and conditions. And the license is completely free. It means that you can use this plugin uh, even for commercial purposes, so um, just accept the terms. So you should feel comfortable doing that, and then install. And that's it. Uh, it asks you to restart Gephi to complete the installation. Uh, so I'm going to restart Gephi a bit later because before that, before restarting Gephi, I want to save my network. So I just click on finish. I close this window. And oh, you see, I even have a little uh, balloon here uh, suggesting that I restart Gephi. Uh, I'm going to do that, do that in a minute. I just want to save my network. And to do that, I click on File. And I'm going to export the network as a graph. Uh, and let me export it. You know, let me export it there, like a uh, test graph. 
and it's a GEXF file test graph save and I'm gonna save it there okay my graph is saved so now I can close Giphy let me do that there Giphy is closed I can uh, launch it again and I wonder if we, oh yes, you don't see it. But basically you have in, in the launch screen, you see that uh, there is a step where the plugin gets installed. Hey Mathieu, glad to see you. So I, I was just um, discussing how to install the plugin published to the web. Why is Giphy taking so much time to launch? Maybe because of the stream? Yeah, as I am streaming, I suppose that my uh, computer is uh, struggling a bit, but Giphy has finally launched. And I see that Flef is, is, is gonna try and, and, and do the, you know, all the steps at the same time. I suppose it's, it's super possible. Okay, so Giphy has opened. I'm gonna open the, the network I've just saved. Uh, file open. And let me, yeah, test graph is the graph I had saved. And I open it. Uh, fine. Okay, so we have the network from the last time. Mathieu, <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly, Mathieu. Well, it's really, um, again, I'm, I'm not super used to, uh, to the comments in the chat, but it's a real pleasure. Uh, so Mathieu, just to uh, answer you first, uh, I'm going to explain the secrets be behind these plugins right after, but I was thinking the best was first to, uh, you know, um, using it, uh, discovering it in practice, but then I'm going to tell all the secrets about it. And Martin, yeah, you just caught me. Uh, indeed, it's, as you see, it's a, it's a complete, uh, how do you, it's an inbound strategy from the school, from my school to, uh, uh, basically attract new students and uh, it's a clever strategy by uh, imprinting the viewers with the logo of, uh, of EMU. But, uh, so we have installed the plugin and, um, and now we're gonna publish to the web. Um, what the plugin has created, and let me zoom in on the, zone, on the region of the screen. You click on file now and export and because you install the plugin there is a new um, menu item which uh, has become available and this new item is published to the web um, i'm glad to say that if your uh, version of Giphy is in a different language um, you should see this menu item in the local language you're using um, so FLEF, maybe you s if you have it in French, you're going to see uh, publié sur le web or something. So you obviously click on, on the, you obviously click on the item and uh, you arrive at an interface, um, which I'm going to explain you. This interface is made of two tabs. The first tab that you arrive on is setup to do just once. And you have a second tab to the right where you can publish your network. So for the first time you are using this plugin and you know this screen, you have to do some stuff on the tab, uh, on the setup tab. Um, and this is, the where, uh, this is a step where we might lose a couple of, um, of 
users and that would be really too bad because um, the first step is you need a GitHub account and you need to be logged in, uh, you, you need to be currently logged in your GitHub account. And maybe that some users of Giphy will uh, find this will find this a bit intimidating or they will not be familiar with GitHub and so they're gonna feel like, you know, uh, it's too complicated, but actually not. So uh, if you have a GitHub account and uh, you know what it is, you know, you're completely fine. If you don't have GitHub installed, uh, you, what you do is simply copy the, the URL that I highlighted in blue there you copy this URL and you open it in a web browser. So let me um, share my web browser on the screen. I, yes, you see it there. So I paste the URL that I, f I had found on the screen in Giphy. And that, uh, that, well, in my case, I'm already logged in GitHub. Let me log out. Let me show you. Yes, so that's the type of screen you will arrive on if you have you don't have a GitHub account and you need to create one. Oh, Flef, super. So Flef, who is with us and who's trying to, to do the steps at the same time, has a GitHub account. So everything I'm explaining, uh, he doesn't need it. But again, if you are not a coder, not a developer, not a, you don't have a, a technical skills, um, you you uh, you shouldn't be afraid. And basically, you click on uh, well, you follow the instructions. What they ask is enter your email. In two words, you create a GitHub account, um, and that's super simple. And once you have created a, a GitHub account, stay logged in. You know and go back to Giphy. So that's what I'm doing now, back to Giphy. OK, so now I assume that you, are, um, you have a, a GitHub account and you are logged in it. Again, this is super simple. Now you go to this website that has the, you know, the, the link there. So you copy the link, you go on a web browser, like this one, you paste the link, you click on, you click on the, you click to uh, basically enter the website. And what I see here is something that is not good, but the reason is that I'm not signed in GitHub, right? So you should be, I repeat, you should be signed in. I just logged out uh, a minute ago. So, well, I hope. I hope, uh, yeah, all fine. So now I'm logged in uh, uh, GitHub and I'm on the page of Giphy Lite. And uh, you should, uh, you, d you will not have exactly the same screen as mine because I already installed this app. But basically, you just click on the buttons that make you install this app. Again, no worries. It's not about installing an app on your um, desktop or laptop. It's just an app which is going to be installed on your GitHub account on the web. So super easy. Uh, the app has been created by the um, owners, or not the owners, but like yeah, the caterers, the carers of, of Giphy, so uh, uh, the founders of Giphy. So this app is completely uh, secure, created by Giphy. So you just have to you know, click and it is installed. N not a big deal. OK, back to Giphy. Now what you do is uh, push this button, connect to Giphy Lite. So I do it. And Immediately or after a few seconds, uh, you see some things in green appearing there. So you, you don't copy this yet. 
First, you go to this website, which is at step number four. I know it's super boring, right? But uh, again, you do that just once. Uh, and if you cut out all my silly comments, it takes really just two seconds. So you copy this link, you go back on your browser, you paste the link, and it brings you to this type of page. And there you understand that it needs you know, the code that we had seen in Giphy. So we ba you go back to Giphy, you copy this code there, so copy it back to the browser, paste, and continue. Uh, some, yeah, some complicated uh, stuff. You just authorize Giphy Lite. Oops. And it says, congratulations, you're all set, which sounds encouraging. You go back to Giphy, and and here something has been written in green. It says, it says, hit. Okay, hit. Weird. Uh, <laughs> uh, I suppose it means success, but in s maybe the translation is not is not uh, super clear. Uh, I think, yeah. It anyway, you can go to publish. Okay, so we go to publish. This time. And I repeat, all these boring steps we just did, uh, we can just, uh, we don't have to do it again ever, right? Uh, and we click on publish your network to the web. So just to insist, what is it going to, to do? It's going to take this network that we have in Giphy at the moment, and it's going to publish it to the web. So uh, we, we just click on this big gray button. So I just did that, and I see that the buttons below that were, you know, that were uh, disabled now seem, uh, well, active. Uh, so what do I do? I see that there is a link to the network visualization open in web browser. That looks interesting, so I just click on it. Uh, what you don't see is that it asks me to which browser do I want to open, so I choose Firefox. And yes, it, it opens uh, a link in my, um, it will open a link on, uh, uh, in your browser. Uh, we have a comment here by Flef, and you make me realize that uh, that's something uh, that um, hmm. um, yeah, I think that's interesting. Uh, there is something to be said about the size of of the network. Uh, um, I can't exactly remember. Yes, I think I remember now. Um, if you have networks that are bigger than 20,000 nodes and or 40,000 edges, so we talk, we, we're talking about big networks, again, to repeat, 20,000 nodes and or 40,000 edges, you're going to get a warning by the plugin that, you know, in Giphy, that publishing such a big network is gonna um, is gonna be too big for the web browser. Uh, you can still do it, but honestly, the web browser is gonna struggle to display the network. Um, so it's a warning, but um, but you uh, you can uh, ignore it, um, even if that's gonna be hard to to see the network on, on the browser. There is a second limit, which is that networks that are bigger than 100 megabytes will not be, uh, you can't publish them. But honestly, these are super big networks. Back to what we just got. So what you have here is the network that you are, were having in Giphy on the web. So how is it, how does it work? 
look at the link in your browser. It's made of two parts. The first part, uh, maybe if I, I know if I'm gonna see it if I zoom. Yeah, right. The first part is uh, this one. Oh, let's take this one here. This is um, the website um, created by Westware. Uh, and Westware are it's it's uh, it's an organization in France uh, based in Nantes uh, in in the western region of France and uh, a, a company made of um, super cool uh, developers and they have created um, 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 a JavaScript framework, or if you want, a web framework to visualize networks on the web. So they are the one Westware who are uh, who provided the capability to visualize networks on the web. Uh, when you see, you know, when you see this page, it's really. Um, uh, made possible by the software develop, developed by Westware. So that's, and you see it because basically uh, this is the website they developed that we are on. But how is your network on their website? It's because if you look at the second part of the link, this is something that has to do with GitHub. You know, if, even if you, it's not written GitHub exactly, it's actually connected to your, twi uh, to your GitHub account. So to explain what we did when we published the, the network with the plugin, what happened is two steps. The first step is that your network was sent, was uploaded to your GitHub account. And this is why you had to set up your GitHub account in the first place. Uh, uh, GitHub is, is a company and a product that helps uh, developers, but anyone, host um, files on the web and more than that, but um, you can uh, store files on GitHub or on something which is called GIST. And this is where, you know, we see GIST there. You can store file on GIST, which is a service by GitHub. So the plugin makes you upload your network on GitHub or GIST to be precise. And then very simply, the link to your file on GitHub is passed on to Westware. The link to your file, you know, this part of the, the very long, the link to your file, the part I just highlighted, is communicated or passed on to the, soft, the web software developed by Westware. And this software or this uh, framework is excellent at visualing, visualizing a network or displaying a, a network on the web. But more than that, you can also explore it. So you can, uh, let me, so I just, I'm not familiar with this uh, interface, but basically you see it's pretty intuitive. Label sizes, uh, my labels are not on by the way. They are on. They are not displayed. Um, oh yeah, great! Wow, well, super, super simple. So now I see my labels. I can tweak their size. Obviously, I can change the size of the nodes. Oops, 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 oops. 
But I don't see a change in the size of the nodes. I don't know why. Never mind. Uh, age sizes. Oh, that works great. And let me let me see. So that's readab readability. Is there any other? Hmm. So you can show your your network in full screen. But I thought we had more. I think there are filters, but where are they? Oops, 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 let's go back to where I was. So that's for readability, but where are the, the filters? Never mind. Um, so one of the key uh, benefits of this is that now your networks you can share them uh, with anyone just by copying the link and sharing it to uh, any user that you want to uh, to uh, you know to communicate it to. So it's super useful. You can also here um, download um, a picture, an image of your network uh, that you can also um, that's easy to share. And here. Um, I just clicked there. Basically, you can embed this network on a page too. So, um, as you see, it's, I don't know what is your use case, but so often we want to share an insight with someone, and this someone doesn't have a specific expertise in Gephi, they don't have the time, they don't have you know, the, the resources to basically uh, uh, use Gephi to, to explore the network that you want to show them. So in this case, you just export your network there and, um, and share the link. Um, hi, Veronica. Super glad to see you too. Um, uh, and Veronica, thanks for the poster you have created on this plugin. So I don't have it there, but uh, if you, uh, Veronica, if you if you have the the poster or the link to the poster, uh, feel free to to share it in the comments. Uh, Veronica is a super central person uh, in the space of uh, um, network analysis, visualization, um, and data analysis. Um, uh, so you sh should uh, check her on Twitter and see all the resources she's sharing. Um, I think so, Flef. Yes, I think that's her uh, Twitter handle. And super nicely, Veronica has created, uh, basically, Veronica has created a poster that sums up in one slide uh, what I've been talking about for the last, uh, you know, 35 minutes. So much more, uh, much more efficient. Um, yeah, maybe just uh, 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 even if it's written in red on the plugin. Um, thank you, Veronica. So check her, check her link for the for the poster session for the poster. Yeah. Just a, a bit of warning. Um, you should, of course, be aware that the, the network that you publish are not private. Um, it's not even unlisted, as you would have you know, a link on YouTube that is un unlisted. I think that uh, a, a network published on GIST could be found through um, uh, you know, um, a search engine. So. I would never ever publish um, uh, confidential networks, confidential data um, through this way. So we could go on and on, but I think this is the major thing for this. Uh, oh, last bit. If you want to unpublish this network, you go back to the let me show you 
go back to Giphy. What you can do in this, if you want to unpublish a network, you, oops, um, you can go to the link of your file on GIST. So let me open it. So this is how it looks like. This is your network as it has been published on GitHub. Uh, and as I told you, GIST is, as you see, as a, is a service offered by GitHub. Um, if you want to unpublish that, you simply delete this file. So super easy. And you know you you, you will uh, still find the the network in your um, well in Giphy where you started uh, this whole thing. Um, okay, so for this is this is it. Now I'd like to uh, to discuss two other things. Um, suspense. I'd like to discuss two other things. The first one is um, um, before I, I answer you, I tell you that. Let me answer to Martin. Is there a way to change the display of Retina? To be honest, I don't know. Uh, Martin, I have to explain first what Retina is. So that's the. That's the two things I'm going to do next. First, explain a bit the background of this plugin, uh, also to give credit where it's due. And second, I'm going to show another way to export um, a network to, to, to the web. So stay tuned. Um, yeah, you're right, Martin. I, I was a bit surprised by the I was a bit surprised by the, the lack of features on, on, on the website. I suppose that the developers of, of, um, at Westware are evolving their, their product. But, so where is this plugin coming from? Um, um, what you need to have um, a network displayed on the web is um, a JavaScript library that um, handles the display. So the language, the programming language that you can use to create animations and visualizations on a web page, this programming language is called JavaScript. Uh, in order to have, you know, um, fancy, beautiful, um, sophisticated visualizations on a web page. Uh, you need some pretty complex and advanced JavaScript programming. It's not trivial at all to show nodes and edges on a web page. The reason is that when you think of it, you have many things to care for. You need to care for the position of these things on the screen, their shape, their colors. Um, you need to handle the zooms um, and, and uh, you know, the variations in the size if you want to uh, make the nodes bigger or smaller, or etc. Um, so that's why uh, when you find such a, a, a JavaScript um, uh, program, uh, it's super. Uh, I mean, it's quite, it's quite, uh, it's quite a contribution, and we were lucky that. I mean, the Giphy crowd was lucky that for a long time now, uh, Alexi Jacomi, uh, who is a, a developer and he develops in many different languages, but he's uh, he's very good at JavaScript, among other things. And Alexi Jacomi has developed um, uh, many years ago a JavaScript library for the visualization of networks on the web. It's called Sigma JS. Let me write that in the comments. 
And Sigma GS is something that any developer can use to show networks on the web. But to use Sigma GS or Sigma JS, uh, you need to be, a, thank you, Mathieu, uh, you need to be a, you know, a developer yourself. So what they did is go uh, what, what you could do, and that's what uh, uh, Alexi, Jacomi, and his colleagues did. They took Sigma GIS and they evolved it or they transformed it, and they created, well, the website I was just showing you. Uh, where is that? Yeah. They created this website, which is actually, so even if it's published, Even if the, you know, the, the, no, that's here. Sorry. Um, the, the product, the service that they have created and developed is called Retina. So Retina is basically uh, um, a JavaScript library, a bit like Sigma GS, uh, or evolved from it, but used in a way that non-developers can take advantage of it. And that's what we just did. We could um, visualize this network without writing a, a single line of code. So that's how uh, the, the network can be, uh, can be visualized on a, on a web page without being a developer, as uh, Martin says in the comments. Um, so that's, you know, the, 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 the big lift or heavy lifting is made by the JavaScript library. And the part where, or the plugin that brings the network in Giphy to that part, so um, I have written it during the Giphy uh, week, uh, a full week we spent with Mathieu and uh, and others um, in Paris uh, uh, a month ago. Uh, and this plugin basically, uh, yeah, just organizes the transfer from uh, your desktop Giphy application to this uh, uh, website. And uh, how did I do that? Again, uh, Alexis Jacomi uh, was, uh, was uh, central because he identified everything I discussed, like, you know, uploading a file to GIST. So you need first to create a GitHub account and all this complex stuff, you know, about copy, copying the code and pasting the code in the right place. I mean, this thing doesn't fall out of the sky from now, where it's basically Alexi who investigated the most secure and robust way for a user who, who doesn't know how to code, for a user to get their network on the web so that uh, Retina uh, could, uh, Retina, so basically Retina here, right, this website, so that Retina could then display the network. So it's a bit, I mean, again, if you use the plugin, you don't really care for all of that, but just to explain to you that uh, a lot of uh, work uh, has been done and not by the author, I'm the author of the plugin, but when you look at you know, everything that is inside and that makes the, the visualization of the web possible, you see that um, uh, Alexis Jacomi and Westware uh, were uh, basically uh, super much uh, involved in it. So that's the, that's the background. Okay, good. Um, and now for the last part, because we have 15 minutes left. Um, the last part is I would like to show you a different way to uh, to, uh, well, to visualize a network on the web. Um, the funny thing is that now that we have covered this part, the next tool we're gonna see has um, the same logic. It's a JavaScript library 
just like Retina or Sigma.js. It's a JavaScript library that um, um, takes a file and visualizes it. Um, so let me demonstrate. Uh, first, we're going to start with Giphy. I'm closing the plugin. So this is the file you want to visualize on the web. Um, what you should do first is export it as a GXF file. File, export, let me zoom in. File, export, graph file. And uh, why don't you see it? Yeah, because it's on another screen. And you export the graph. So test graph number two, and you save it. OK, you, now you can close Giphy uh, or keep it open, but we're going to need to open a browser now. So it's, we're going to go to No Code Functions, which is a, an, a web application I, I'm developing. So no code, no code functions.com. Um, that's in French here, but you can localize it in any, uh, in uh, more than 100 languages. So let's speak English. And what you have here is a series of functions that uh, cover uh, you know different cases in uh, text mining and, and network um, analysis. The common point, uh, the common ground for all these functions is that you don't need to know how to code to use them. Hence the name of the web application, no code functions. The one we're going to need now is the Giphy Voice Viewer Converter. So you click on it. And, and that's pretty much it. You choose, you have a button that says choose a GXF file. So we're going to choose the file we just have exported. Um, I think you can see it here. Or oh, let me, let me zoom in. Yeah, so you pick the test graph number two, you open it. And it should say that uh, the file has loaded. And then what you do is, um, yeah, you just <laughs> you just click on the second button, which says convert to Voss Viewer JSON file. Um, you can either keep it private, or uh, if it's private, uh, basically, it's not exactly private, actually. It's unlisted. But uh, you can choose to make it public. Uh, so you click, on, uh, you click on the button. And that's the result you get. Uh, so your network. Uh, visualized in a way that you would recognize if you are used to uh, the Les Miserables.gxf. So what happened? Uh, let's look at the URL. Uh, yes, so you are still on the website, nocodefunctions.com. What has been created is a file in the VOS viewer format. And this file is, um, is hosted or is stored on the same server as the web application. So the web application is uh, using the Voss Viewer JavaScript library to visualize the, the, the network you have just imported. Uh, it has some capabilities for uh, exploration, so you can see it with the panel on the left. Um, in particular, if you click on update, uh, if you click on update, you can change the layout, um, but it's 
pretty uh, you have very simple options i would m i would recommend you to to work on the layout in giphy but let's say that if you incre if you increase attraction i would i would assume that the the layout will contract <laughs> not at all <laughs> uh, well i uh, so i'm going to uh, i'm going to uh, suggest that you uh, r refer to the documentation of uh, Voice Viewer. So let me, let me before answering the question by by Martin. Let me explain what this is about. Um, I'm just making use of the open source version of something which is called, oops, 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 oops. No, no, yeah, which is called app.vozviewer.com. So vozviewer, and I'm not gonna be long there, but it's important. Vozviewer is um, a desktop application, pretty much very close to Giphy in the spirit, developed by a research center in the Netherlands. It's called the CVTS, CW. TS, and it's located in Leiden, a beautiful uh, city in, um, in the Netherlands. And it's a research center in bibliometrics and scientometrics in this city, um, where two researchers, uh, Ludo Waldman and Ness van Eck, uh, who, um, who developed this desktop software. And recently, I think last summer, actually, uh, they developed a JavaScript version of their software. Um, very much like Sigma GS and Retina. Um, and this is what we make use of. And if you are a developer, uh, this JavaScript library is available as a GitHub repository. And that's what I used to uh, basically uh, you know, display this thing on, on local functions. Uh, last word on that. No, before the last word, Let's answer Martin. Um, so the question by Martin is: uh, so if the if the if the you choose to make the visualization public, then it's going to be uh, well, you know, on a folder that. Um, that the application can access uh, a folder on the server and you know forever if you don't click on public there is um, a six months um, limit where basically the every six months the the files older than six months are wiped out uh, so that's that's it but let me go back to, I think I explained that on the, on the app. Let me, I didn't check, check it for a long time. Yeah, that's that's what I remember. Um, if it is, uh, yeah, the difference is really that uh, public it's gonna be like permanent, and private it's really for your own consumption. So uh, it's gonna be. Uh, um, well, I have some doubt here. So I should uh, obviously make it a bit more precise. On the, I'm going to double check and, and, and uh, uh, provide more explanations. Uh, now back to uh, Voz Viewer and what it, what it does and what it can do. So let me go back to, oops. So let me refresh. Why is the thing not? Maybe I should just, I'm going to reload the file, convert 
Yes. Um, just a bit on the pros and cons and differences between uh, you know the the Retina and Giphy plugin and those viewer. Um, the difference is in the uh, in the uh, size of the network that these two um, these two web frameworks allow. Um, the 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 Gephi, um plugin that exports to Retina Retina uh, is is uh, super strong and again that's why you need to be ec an excellent developer to develop uh, Retina. Retina can display uh, thousands of nodes. And, uh, and, and dozens and of thousands of ages. And to do that on a, on a web page, it's really a, a huge performance. Um, Voz Viewer uh, has capacities limited to a couple of hundred nodes. Uh, so that's really a, a big difference. So why would you use um, uh, a Voz Viewer? It's because um, Voz Viewer from the start uh, was created as a software that put a huge emphasis on the, visual, on the clear visualization of textual information, so the labels. Uh, you would see that most, uh, the most on the desktop version of Voz Viewer. Um, but um, even if I, I did not investigate uh, the, the, um, fully the capacities of Voz Viewer online, my, my bet would be that it, it has better or at least good capacities, capabilities for the, for the visualization of, of, uh, of uh, labels. Uh, so that they don't overlap, so that um, you know the zooming, zooming and zoom, zoom out effect uh, basically keep um, the labels um, in uh, in a way that makes them easy to read. Um, so I would uh, yeah I, I would test the two. If you have a big network, go for Retina immediately. But for smaller networks. I, I would really have a look at Voz Viewer uh, online. Um, Martin. So say, oh, good. So the servers are not free. Exactly. Yeah, Martin, exactly, exactly. So. Uh, let's have this conversation. When I developed the plugin during the Giphy week, the plugin I just presented to, to export a network on uh, Retina, uh, my first impulse was to provide my own server from it for it. You know, just because it's uh, you know it's quite cheap to have a server that can um, that can have a capacity of several terabytes. So I was like, you know, let's bypass the whole GIST and GitHub account creation. You know, just let the users uh, host their, their files there. Um, but I was reminded by uh, Mathieu uh, and Mathieu Bastion as well, and basically uh, everyone in the room um, that um, uh, uh, the server could be hacked. Um, because you always have clever ways to upload uh, funky and uh, uh, tainted content to a, to a server. Um, plus, as you highlight, Martin, the, um, as the owner of a server, uh, you can have a shared responsibility for the content that is hosted on it. Uh, so definitely, the, the GIST GitHub you know, personal way uh, for the user to host their own content is much safer. Um, I was, um, I, I'm still, I'm still very much, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, 
uh, bended or biased for the for the user's point of view and I, I really resent the fact that a user has to go through this authentic authentication uh, through github I, I find it painful and um, and uh, yeah uh, boring um, so on on the the web app that I develop myself, uh, I I still have this no authentication, no security uh, kind of way to host uh, any network. Um, uh, the way I did it was uh, I did secure the server for sure. Um, you can't just. Um, uh, um, upload uh, any file of any size the, the thing is is uh, uh, you have checks in place uh, but as you mentioned uh, what if somebody uh, uploads a file which is full of illegal uh, content I, I can't cover this case for sure um, so I don't know um, uh, what I should add for sure is a disclaimer uh, a warning and a disclaimer I'm not sure this is going to be enough, but um, at least that should be added. So um, not for later, uh, adding a warning and disclaimer, it's pretty easy to do. And yet, if somebody uses it to, you know, uh, upload something which is super uh, illegal and embarrassing, I'm not sure a disclaimer is going to be enough. So uh, yeah, I suppose I should be reasonable and uh, maybe uh, um, kill this feature. I don't know. I'm going to give it more uh, thought. Yeah, Fluff, you're right, but um, I'm, you know, I, I just remember my first steps as a, as a, as an analyst or just as some, as a user. And everything feels like a hurdle um, or uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm thinking back to this, uh, to these years when. Uh, but you know, uh, you're right. The you can't just dismiss security because it's boring. So I'm, I'm still going to try and find. A, maybe I won't find anything, but I'm going to try and find some ways to, to lower this barrier. Uh, I'm not sure there is a way. Um, I, I'm just, as you say, Martin, I mean, at the moment we have, I have like close to, uh, not zero users, but like um, still just a few. So I'm just uh, taking a bit more time to, uh, to, uh, to think uh, about it. Um, so that's it for today, because it's a bit after four. Um, I like to, uh, it's, it's not the Twitch way to, to do it. It's a bit like a lecturing style, but I like to thank the, uh, you know, to thank you, uh, Martin, Flev, Mathieu, Veronica, who participated um, there and on Twitter and other places. Um, it's, uh, well, it feels great to, um, to work with you. Um, and last note, just to say, of course, uh, I, I just scratched the surface, right? If the broader topic was uh, publishing to, uh, to the web, uh, you have a lot of uh, libraries, software, private software um, that exist. And, um, and uh, uh, yeah, we didn't cover them, but uh, when the when this uh, stream is going to be uh, posted as a replay on YouTube, um, please feel free to, um, to add in the comments uh, interesting frameworks and especially no-code frameworks that you would know of and that would uh, make it easy and fun and uh, productive to, to publish networks on the web. So that's it. I, I won't cut the stream now because again, uh, in the spirit of Twitch and uh, Conviviality, uh, it's nice not to, to shut things down um, like that. Um, but um, yeah, it's over on my side and uh, I'm gonna just drink a bit of coffee and, uh, and check the, the comments before uh, switching off. Thanks again, see you next week. Oh, next week is uh, 
Yeah. Oops, the timer is off. Um, next week, is we're going to look at how to create networks uh, from text using no code functions. Bye. I know, Fleth, I know. I am just staying there a bit to, you know, that's Twitch. You're supposed to, uh, I could even, you know, cure my nails and. OK, that's it for today. Well, have a good week, and see you maybe next week. <laughs>